Hello and welcome back. My name's Sam Barber and you're listening to episode 6 of A Light in the Dark, my songwriting journey. So far in my fledgling podcast career, I've started right at the very beginning as a would-be songwriter to releasing and marketing my first EP and learning how to take steps to protect my intellectual property or IP along the way. Baby steps. In my case, the most difficult aspect of the whole process has been to effectively market one's product, to build the brand and then build awareness of that brand. It's an ongoing process, but I do recommend that you settle on a brand name as soon as you can and then at the very least set up Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube profiles with exactly the same name. For me, it was Sam Barber Music. This brings a unity of brand delivery and makes it easier for potential customers to find your brand easily. In today's offering, I'm going to discuss the next musical project I worked on after the EP, my charity single for the homeless, Street Sleeper. The process of writing it, working with a new producer, my good friend Stevie Bull, who I also went on to produce my debut album, Let's Join Hands With, breaking new ground in radio play and capping 2019 off with an amazing opportunity to perform at the World's Big Sleep Out in Hong Kong on December the 7th, 2019, which also happened to be my birthday. This song's journey is an amazing one and I can't wait to share it with you. Let's start. In the summer of 2018, I visited Australia for the first time with my wife, who was pregnant at the time with our first child, Audrey. It was a truly magical trip. Tasmania was amazing, and the week we spent in Hobart and the surrounding areas went way too quick for our liking. I got the inspiration for my country track, Freedom Wheels, whilst cruising along the many open roads there. And we met many wonderful people, ate great food, and were genuinely sad to leave. After Tasmania, we flew to Melbourne and for 10 days enjoyed everything this beautiful city had to offer. Upon arrival back in Hong Kong, we had decided next time we visited Australia, it would be for the entire summer. We loved it. Fast forward a few months to early January 2019, and I'd made a great start to the year, writing three or four songs in a matter of a few days, including Freedom Wheels. I was on a roll. Then one day in early February, I decided to write a song about the homeless. This stemmed from what my wife and I had seen in Melbourne the previous summer, and prior to that in Hong Kong and the UK as well, respectively. In an old market in Melbourne one Sunday morning, I watched a guy approaching several diners in restaurants asking for money for food. In the end, someone gave him something just to get rid of him, I think. One night, as we walked back to our flat in the CBD area of Melbourne, I was asked for small change by a desperately sad-looking homeless man. I gave him what was in my pocket, but felt that it wasn't enough. It didn't really solve the problem, just ease the guy's pain for a few hours or so. August in Melbourne can be cold and changeable, and the memory of his face stuck with me as he struggled off into the night. I drew upon this image when I started writing Street Sleeper. Other images were of the homeless people I saw sleeping on flattened cardboard boxes in the Shum Shui Po area of Hong Kong as I hurried home after dinner some nights during my first year in Hong Kong, many moons ago. These guys would place their old boots neatly by their makeshift bed and sleep with no blankets as rats and cockroaches scurried around everywhere. I'd seen homeless people before during the day in my time living in Edinburgh and given them some coins and a friendly word but seeing them at night and observing how they live was heartbreaking. I'll say that Street Sleeper was inspired thematically by Paul Simons the Boxer and Streets of London by Ralph McTell. 
and I was particularly pleased with the catchy little melody embodied in the simple fingerstyle chords that set up the song in a clear folk storytelling-like way. It was very self-contained, and as I had mapped out a chord progression relatively quickly, I pushed ahead with the lyrics. Later, my wife would debate that the title, Street Sleeper, was too bleak, too harsh a name, but I did beg to differ. I wanted to write a song that would portray the hardships and desperation of the protagonist. I wasn't looking for a solution as such, or making a judgment, but instead my idea was to try to focus on one person's struggle with homelessness and his eventual demise because of it. I also wanted to try and write in different voices, in this case a person's own observations of a homeless man and asking simple questions about his plight in the verse, followed by the naysayers in the pre-chorus before reaffirming the original voice in the chorus. This ongoing dialogue within a song was something I'd never tried before. And what I was just starting to grasp was that when writing a song, you don't always have to espouse your own point of view. It can be more subtle, understated, perhaps leaving something for the listener to chew on at the end, allowing him or her to draw their own conclusions. This early attempt at lyrical tapestry was juxtaposed against a brutal and uncompromising subject matter, which was in itself wrapped up in reflective melodic sequences and phrases. The song was written on the guitar and completed in around two hours, and in my usual habits at the time, I had moved on to another song in a matter of days, such was my rich vein of songwriting form in early 2019. Street Sleeper and other songs from January and February 2019 were a clear change and improvement from my earlier songs. I could feel a sense of development, of growing fluidity and intuition in writing in the medium, and I didn't want to break my good streak, so I kept writing at first. Even so, I knew I wanted to come back to Street Sleeper at some point and potentially release it as a charity single. Such was my strong belief in the song and my determination to make a statement of support in trying to eradicate the awful disease of homelessness. As a result, in early April, I started to look for a potential collaborator for Street Sleeper in my native Scotland, someone I could work on the song with when I returned to the UK for the summer holidays in July 2019. It was an ambitious project and I contacted Stevie Bull via LinkedIn, who was a producer and songwriter in Ayrshire. I sent him a rough demo of the song and we arranged to meet on my return to Scotland and take it from there. In the meantime, I played Street Sleeper and two other original songs live on RTHK3 Morning Brew Show with James Ross on the 1st of May, 2019 which was a wonderful experience and marked my third live performance on James's show since 2017. I had the honor of returning to the show on Christmas Day 2019 to perform Street Sleeper once again, as well as another song I had written about the homeless, Land of Rainbows. Well, fast forward a couple of months and straight from our first meeting in Ayrshire, in July 2019, Stevie and I had become friends, both serious in nature and sharing a love of the music of Jerry Rafferty. We wanted to give this new project a try. I invited him to a charity gig I was doing at West Kilbride Village Hall with fellow singer-songwriter Derek J. Martin to raise monies for North Ayrshire Cancer Care in honour of my late father. I played around 10 to 12 original songs, including Street Sleeper, and with the help of local press coverage and the kind people of West Kilbride, we managed to raise over £200. After the gig, Stevie and I soon set a date for a visit to his studio. Time was an issue as I needed to return to Hong Kong, so we aimed to finish my parts, that is, the vocals and acoustic guitar, in one day, the 8th of August. 
The session went well, and we found our stride and a synergy I hadn't experienced before in the studio. I finished all my parts, including some harmony vocals, within a few hours. And until the early evening, Stevie cracked on and produced a rough cut of the song before I left, which was already sounding excellent as I listened to it in the car driving back to my place. I had been out at the studio from early morning until around 7 p.m. and was very glad to return back home to have dinner with my wife and daughter. I was very impressed with the work Stevie had done and was very excited about the song moving forward. But I didn't have any more time to return to Stevie's studio before I left for Hong Kong. Instead, we kept in constant touch via phone and email regarding the different aspects of the arrangement of the song, with Stevie recording in instruments himself and adding MIDI files as well. After having released my EP in March of that year, I was ready to release something new to keep the momentum going and mark a change in my songwriting and style. I also wanted to set the bar higher in terms of radio play and general coverage including trying to get airplay on Jim Gellatley's fantastic Sunday show on Amazing Radio, as well as BBC Radio Scotland, and entering it in various songwriting competitions. I felt a growing sense of momentum and self-belief in my abilities, and as a result, pushed myself harder to try and achieve my goals. Once Stevie and I had decided on the final production of the song, I decided to take his advice and request the help of London-based renowned mastering engineer Pete Mayer, a fellow Scot, to add the finishing touches by mastering the song. Stevie had worked with him before on previous projects, and he advised me that it's always better to have two different sets of ears during the process, one for production and one for mastering, as the two are different arts in themselves. Pete couldn't have been nicer and promptly sent back two mastered versions of the song, one in WAV format and one in MP3, within a couple of weeks of emailing him the song and my introducing myself. I was delighted with the finished product, as was Stevie. In my opinion, everything was a step up, and what I was most happy about was the fruitful relationship Stevie and I had struck up. We were almost ready to go. What I now needed to do was to decide on a release date and get the cover artwork done. This time, I wanted to release the song as a separate entity, a charity single for the homeless in some sense, but I wasn't quite sure where to look. I set the release date for the 30th of November 2019 via CD Baby and turned to my old friend Kay Wong for the album cover artwork. Kay had worked with me on the design of my EP, Hope, Love Never Dies, as well as Caledonia Dreaming and my Teacher Ham series of children's albums. I was in safe hands and she produced a beautiful, simple design that highlighted the message I wanted to put across perfectly, that of vulnerability and loneliness in the big city. In October or November that year, I discovered that the world's big sleepout was being initiated in many cities around the world on the 7th of December 2019 by Josh Littlejohn, the founder of The Social Bite, a social enterprise that's dedicated to helping end homelessness in Scotland. Hong Kong was one of the cities taking part, and I was delighted. I sensed an opportunity and contacted the organizer of the Hong Kong leg of the event, Mr. Jeff Rottmeyer, CEO and founder of Impact HK in Hong Kong, which was a registered charity for the homeless, and mentioned that I have a song, Street Sleeper, and asked whether he would like to use it for the event, etc. To my delight, Jeff was very taken with the idea and invited me to play at the event. And at that moment, I had found two charities to dedicate sale proceeds of the song to, and a wonderful opportunity to share the song live at the world's most meaningful event for homelessness, and all on my birthday, 7th of December. It certainly felt like the stars were aligned. 
and I was so grateful for the opportunity to share my humble little song for such a noble cause. I'm also happy that the process of writing Street Sleeper came from a genuine care for the homeless and that the song came into being in this sincere and organic way. Eventually, the song found its place. There was nothing cynical or calculated about the process, and I didn't even find out about the world's big sleep out until October or so. However, what I did do was to seize an opportunity and initiate a chance for a song that I thought would fit the bill perfectly once I did become aware. I put my song to Jeff with nothing to lose, and I ended up with a wonderful memory of playing it that night at Central Harbour Front in Hong Kong. The memory of that night would always be special in my heart. I had spent my spare time the week before rehearsing the song along with Caledonia Dreaming, which I would open with. I had a two-song slot sometime around 10 p.m. My wife and I had went out for a birthday dinner with two dear friends at the IFC prior to the event, but I was so nervous, and unusually for me, didn't eat a lot. The setup and organization was spot on, and the tech guys made me feel very comfortable as I got ready to play. There was a wind blowing around on the open stage, and it was a bit cold, and I was scared my fingers would be too cold to play, but somehow I managed to perform well and give a heartfelt performance, encouraged by the crowd of people sleeping out who sensed that the songs were simple yet sincere, and most importantly, on point. It remains one of my most enjoyable performances, and I'm deeply indebted to Jeff for giving me an opportunity to perform. Upon its release on the 30th of November 2019, Street Sleeper went on to gain airplay around the world, as well as press coverage in a local Hong Kong newspaper, Ming Pao. This included my first ever airplay on Jim Gellatley's Sunday show on Amazing Radio in the UK in December 2019, a target which I'd longed to hit for a while. It also won numerous awards, including Best Social Change Song in the Spring 2020 Cluzine International Music Awards, a finalist top 10 position in the Best Alternative Song category of the Winter 2020 World Songwriting Awards, and a silver medal in the Spring 2020 Global Music Awards. It also came to the attention of producers at BBC Radio Scotland, who, although they eventually didn't play the song on their shows, just getting an email reply of, thank you, but, etc., etc., was a step up. It filled me with confidence and I pushed forwards to the next project, setting my targets even higher and next time to try and get airplay on the BBC, amongst other things. To this day, 100% of all sales proceeds of the song are split equally between the two aforementioned charities, The Social Bite and Impact HK. Street Sleeper is also registered with the PRS and the PPL, as is standard for me. Well, that's all for this episode, folks. I sincerely hope you can tune in for episode 7 next time, where I'll start to share my processes of writing my song Let's Join Hands and what this led to. All very exciting. If you'd like to support this show, there are many ways you can do so. You can subscribe to my Facebook and YouTube pages for more updates and join my Facebook group, Sam Barber Music. Also, if you would like to ask a question about this podcast or previous ones or anything at all, you can email me at sambarbermusic at gmail.com. I'd love to hear about your songwriting experiences. And if you like my music, you can download directly from my website, www.sambarber.com or from my Here Now page sambarber.herenow.com You can also make a donation via PayPal. Your support is sincerely appreciated. To finish, believe in yourself, believe in your songs, believe in your message. Enjoy 
the journey. Until next time, take care and stay safe. Thank you for listening.